On today's episode of Locked On Oilers, we are going to be starting our list of the top 10 Edmonton Oilers prospects in the Oilers organization. We will have that and so much more on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Your Locked On Oilers, your daily podcast on the Edmonton Oilers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to the Locked On Oilers podcast. I'm your host and former Oilers game day producer Brett Holden. As mentioned on today's episode, we are kicking off our list with the top 10 Edmonton Oilers prospects in the Oilers organization. Today we are going to have number 10, number 9, and number 8. But along in this series, we're also going to have some honorable mentions, but also... Don't expect Stuart Skinner at any point. Stuart Skinner's in his own tier. Don't worry about Stuart Skinner. You can put him number one if you want. Stuart Skinner won't be on this list because he's basically an Edmonton Oiler already. So either way, we are going to have number 10, number 9, and number 8 on today's episode. One of them you may be very familiar with. Another one you may have heard here and there. And another one may be a new name to you. We will have all that and so much more on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Thank you so much for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you find your podcast. Alrighty, let's move into number 10 and the number 10 best prospect in the Edmonton Oilers organization right now is Raphael Lavoie. Yes, Raphael Lavoie, the former Halifax Moosehead and also played a little bit in Shakutami as well in the QMJHL. The Edmonton Oilers selected Lavoie second in the second round, 38th overall. Honestly, I had uh, Raphael Lavoie in the first round, was kind of shocked not to see him and was happy that the Edmonton Oilers were able to get him in the second round. Now, Maybe wondering why I would even say that. I've been covering prospects for the last seven years. I I, I watch. 200 prospects just to to make a top 100 list so uh this past year was one of my years that i slacked but that's okay we won't worry about that but uh if you're, you're wondering why you should be listening to me or why you want to listen to some random guy on the internet there's so many of them now that is why i've been watching prospects for a very long time i love prospects but either way Raphael lavoie was one of them I watched Raphael Lavoie, loved Raphael Lavoie for a couple of reasons, but was concerned for other reasons as well. And it seems to be some of the reasons why he may not be in the NHL yet. Maybe why he also slipped into the second round as well to the Edmonton Oilers. But let's start with the positives. Raphael Lavoie is a big body. He stands at six foot four, 196 pounds, very solid size. He's 21 years old, so he's got some age on him already. Some maturity on him is the right way to put it. And he can produce. In 2018-2019, 62 games played in the QMJHL for the Halifax Mooseheads. 32 goals in that year. 41 assists. 70 Three points, And then he continued it in the playoffs as well. 23 games in the playoffs for Lavoie. He turned out 20 goals. 20 in 23 games. 12 assists. 32 points. Then the next season, he got traded to Shakutami. That was his draft year, by the way, that he produced like that. Then the following year, he got traded to Shakutami halfway through the year. At Shakutami, he had 25 uh, games played, 20 goals, 18 assists, good for 38 points. In Halifax, he had already banked 30 games, 18 goals, 26 assists, and 44 points. So, in 55 games, he produced 80 two points yeah yeah and then he went over to sweden and continued that trend as well which weirdly enough yesterday we mentioned how sometimes guys play in the european leagues and they don't necessarily produce the way that guys in the chl would and that's it it depends it truly does depend Raphael lavoie went over to sweden and vaspi in sweden And tore it up. He he just said that theory is not true, my mans. Because in 51 games played in Vaspi, 23 goals, 22 assists. Good for 45 points. And then on top of it, he also had 
80. 80 penalty minutes. Yeah. Yeah, he went over there and ran some uh, something nasty over there in Sweden. Something they hadn't seen before. They probably saw this big tall. Well, I mean, this big tall French six four guy and went, "Who is this guy?" But uh, yes, no, uh, he went over there. Very solid season for him there, and really tore it up for uh, uh, them there. Then he came back to North America, played his first professional season in Bakersfield, where in fifty six games. 13 goals, 13 assists, good for six, uh, 26 points, excuse me. The thing about Lavoie over the past year is, yes, in those 56 games, only 13 goals, 13 assists. His first full season against men, against real professionals, a lot of people really knocked him about his scoring uh, as well early in his uh, season last year. Then he started to tear it up around the trade deadline. People were like, hmm... Maybe he was trying to get out of here. <laughs> uh, but no, he's still an Edmonton Oilers prospect, an exciting Edmonton Oilers prospect. The thing about Raphael Lavoie yes, he is big. He can protect the puck with his body. But he, you can really notice him sometimes. And that's both positively and negatively. He can positively run a game and really force the issue for the other team, both in the offensive zone, around the net, in the crease, and in the neutral zone as well. But he's also really noticeable when he's not playing well. Sometimes you get guys who are basically invisible when they're not playing well, and you're like, oh, is he even playing? You notice when Lavoie is playing, it's kind of tough to miss him at six foot four to 196 pounds. But you notice him in the bad ways. Sometimes he's maybe a little inconsistent. Maybe he may be giving the puck up. Maybe giving a few things here and there up. Maybe a little late. I don't want to call him lazy because I don't. I, I don't know his work ethic. That's not fair for me, who has not seen him play and practice and see him go from day to day to call him lazy. But sometimes there are some plays. Maybe he he just gives up on things like that. You understand what I'm saying. The other thing is is that he's always been the big guy on the ice, especially in juniors. Basically, all throughout his junior career, he was over six foot two, six foot three, six foot four, and was always the bigger guy on the ice. So he really used his body to his advantage, really used his strength to his advantage, and could really pot the puck in around the net. Well, in his first full season around men who were also around his size and strength, he only produced 13 goals and only produced 13 assists. That could be an issue down the way. Can, the, the big thing for Raphael Lavoie to focus on is whether or not he can get bigger and stronger, and not even bigger and stronger, just able to keep up with men in the NHL. The number 10 overall prospect in the Edmonton Oilers uh, uh, prospect pool or organization, Raphael Lavoie. This next guy at number nine is a guy that a lot of people are already familiar with. A guy who got a chance with the Edmonton Oilers this year and then got immediately sent down. We will talk about him. Who do you think it is? Maybe you already know who it is. We will talk about him in just a second. But first, I want to tell you about our partners over at Bet... Or not on Bet Online. At Built! Built! Not Bet. Built! Built! Over at Built, if you haven't already tried our Built Bar Puffs yet, well, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. You ready? Delicious. Indulgent. Cookie dough. Yes, that's right. Covered in chocolate cookie dough. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to your new favorite flavor, Cookie Dough Chunk Puffs with a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of actually making cookie dough. Plus, it's healthy for you. Cookie dough uh, chunk puffs are only 160 calories and they have a whopping 
15 grams of protein in them. Yeah, you're getting a lot of protein in those things. Run to Built.com and snag a box for yourself or the family, and uh, it'll be the perfect treat, I promise you. Um, make sure that you also find the proper hiding spot, or else they'll be gone <laughs> right away. Make sure you head to Built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15. That is LOCKED15 to get 15% off your next order at Built.com. Again, that is going to Built.com using the promo code LOCKED1515 to get 15% off your next order. Alrighty, we are moving into the number nine overall prospect in the Edmonton Oilers organization. He is a guy who played a game with the Edmonton Oilers this year has been in some trade talks here and there basically ever since the Edmonton Oilers have drafted him, and that is Dmitry Samarukov. Now, the reason why I have Dmitry Samarukov down here at 9 is because he has been included in a ton of trade conversations ever since, basically, he was drafted in 2017. He was drafted in the third round, 84th overall by the Edmonton Oilers, and he, from the Guelph Storm, he is from Russia, but that is the thing about Dmitry Samarukov that is kind of attractive for a, a lot of teams. Dmitry Samarukov, while being from Russia, came straight to North America once he could and played in the OHL, played the CHL game, the North American game, and really climatized himself to the North American game. That was big. Now he's 23 years old and still hasn't really cracked the Edmonton Oilers lineup. It seems like every year he's included in the flavor of the year, basically, for which Edmonton Oilers trade target he should be included in. Still an Edmonton Oilers, so again, that is why he's down at number nine is because of uh, all the trade talk that he has been in. Maybe I'm tapering your expectations a little bit here, but uh, the also the other thing where I guess we're starting with the negatives with Dmitry Samarukov. The other thing with Dmitry Samarukov is that he has had injury problems. Just last year, he had both a broken jaw early in the season, which could have also cost him a spot on the Edmonton Oilers roster early on in the season, out of training camp and then he broke his wrist or had a major wrist injury as well down the stretch uh in Bakersfield didn't play a full season played 51 games for Bakersfield though last year three goals 15 assists good for 18 points has had some familiarity around uh, Jay Woodcroft as well uh in his uh, first full season as a pro 47 games played for him under Jay Woodcroft in 2019-2020 Two goals, eight assists, ten points. The nice thing about Sam Marukov now, though, is that the coach actually has a feel for him, where when he came up uh, against the St. Louis Blues for his first NHL game, made a mistake early, and then was basically playing from behind for whatever the next two minutes of the game that he did actually play, because he did get benched by uh, uh, Dave Tippett as well. So, uh it, now Jay Woodcroft knows what to expect from uh, 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 Dmitry Samarukov. You see it with guys like Vincent DeHarnay even right now, who's getting a lot of love from Dave Tippett, or Dave Tippett, from Dave Manson, excuse me, and Jay Woodcroft saying that he might be a guy who makes the team next year. You see a lot uh, how uh, guys like Ryan McLeod were uh, administered throughout the year. Didn't play at all in the PK when Dave Tippett was the Edmonton Oilers head coach. And then Jay Woodcroft came in and then all of a sudden well Ryan McLeod is on every power play because they had him in Bakersfield and realized the type of penalty killer he is well Jay Woodcroft and Dave Manson may take a look at Dmitry Samarukov down the road and go okay we know what we have in him we know what he can bring let's let's let's, let's play him let's bring him up why are we always talking about him in in trade details or in trade trade conversations so what does Dmitry Samarukov bring well like mentioned he is six foot three he's only 188 pounds so not like the Raphael Lavoie of 198 pounds or 196 or whatever he was 188 pounds so you would like to see a little bit more size on him especially at 23 years old we'll see if he can grow into the body but the thing about Samarukov is 
is. He's a smooth skater. He's a really good skater. He can separate guys from the puck, not only with his stick, but also with his body as well. Obviously, he's six foot three. Uh, he, he also plays the game with kind of a bravado as well. When he's out on the ice, you kind of know when he's out on the ice because he kind of... Not necessarily captains the play, but he, he he's always surveying what's going on. He's always chest up, kind of always knows what's gonna happen next. It's kind of it's kind of cool. It's kind of like a commander type of play from Dmitry Samarukov. Every move is intentional. He, he really moves quite well, uh, obviously with the, his skating skill. But again, I mentioned just his skating skill and his size. The issue is if he does get heavier. Does he have to sacrifice some sort of foot speed? That was a conversation that a lot of people were having around Maverick Lamoureux in this last year's draft, uh, this recent draft, uh, is that he's a six foot seven hockey player, but he's only what was he? He was like 176 pounds or something like that. And a lot of guys or a lot of scouts around the league were saying he's got to get bigger. But then he acknowledged in an interview before that if I get bigger, I might lose my foot speed and my foot Foot speed is my biggest part of my game. So that's kind of the fight that a lot of bigger prospects have to go through. They realize that you're going to have to play against men. Take a look at Raphael Lavoie, for example. You have to play against men. You have to play against guys who are going to be bigger and stronger than you. In the NHL, there's always going to be a guy who's bigger than strong and stronger than you. So you have to realize and, and focus on how you're going to basically become better and focus on how you're going to attack those types of players. Players. It seems like Dmitry Samarukov is still kind of finding his footing in that way. Could it be the injuries? Could it be whatever? Who knows? There's there's a lot of things that could go to it. Uh, again, uh, Dmitry Samarukov as well has a scoring touch. I mean, in his final year in Guelph, after playing five games as a pro in Bakersfield, he did have one more season of eligibility in the CHL, and he went back and with the storm and and put up a storm with Guelph. 59 games played for him in his final year in uh, uh, Guelph. 10 goals, 35 assists, 45 points. He was in discussions for one of the best uh, defensemen in the league at the time. It's just a matter of being able to now put it all together and play with the Edmonton Oilers. The thing about the Edmonton Oilers and the Edmonton Oilers prospects and the Edmonton Oilers decor is that they have a lot of really good defensemen now coming up. You have guys like Philip Broberg, Evan Bouchard is now on the team, Marcus Niemelainen as well, who has been another one of those slow burners as well for the Edmonton Oilers, another slow burner in uh, uh, Vincent DeHarnay as well. Phil Kemp I will throw in there because I'm a big Phil Kemp guy. The Edmonton Oilers have had a a lot of defensemen, especially recently, make that push as a top defensive prospect, and yet Sam Rukov has kind of just kept himself in the middle there. We shall see what happens with Sam Rukov. As mentioned, I think the reason why I have him and Lavoie at 10 and 9 is because they both might be included in trades or kind of attracted or attractive to other teams around the league. So, uh, you know, it seems like uh, maybe tapering your expectations of those guys a little bit. Maybe don't get, maybe don't get too personal. Get a little distant like them, but we'll see. I, I, again, I want them both on the edge. Edmonton Oilers, I like them both in their draft years. Now they've developed or in the middle of development, and uh, we shall see what turns out from it. But let's move on to the eighth overall prospect in the Edmonton Oilers organization. And this guy you might not necessarily know too much about, but you should, because he is going to be an interesting name in the Oilers organization for a couple of years to come, at least, we shall see. Uh, I think he just recently signed his uh, entry-level contract, so he is under contract with the Edmonton Oilers. So a guy to watch at number eight is coming up in just a second. But first, I want to thank you for listening to Locked On Oilers and for making us your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, after you find out who the number eight Oilers prospect is, make sure you listen to Locked On NHL. Locked On experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world with Locked On NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast. Alrighty, as I reach over to get my final notes for the number eight prospect in the Edmonton Oilers uh, organization, and his name 
is Tyler Tulio. I'm sorry I made you wait so long. I did, I did. But it's Tyler Tulio from the Oshawa Generals. This uh, The Edmonton Oilers selected Tulio in 2020, so pretty recently in the fifth round, 126th overall in this year's pa in, in uh 2020's draft I should say he's not the biggest guy we both we had a guy who was six foot four uh number 10 six foot three at number nine but at number eight we have a guy who's five foot ten 165 pounds not the biggest guy in the world but sometimes he plays bigger than his bio says he's 20 years old now so has one year one final year of eligibility in Oshawa for uh the OHL Big thing for him this year is being able to play like a bottom six guy. Now, that sounds weird, especially for a guy who last season put up in 65 games, 42 goals, 44 assists, and 86 points. I know that sounds weird. But the year before in the COVID year, the year that the OHL didn't have a season, Tyler Tulio went over to Slovakia. And in Slovakia, he played 19 games in Slovakia, had four goals, nine assists, good for 13 points. That's pretty respectable. He also had 77 penalty minutes in those 19 games. So he has a bite to his game. And if you listen to his conversation with some of the people at Oilers TV uh, at the development camp, he realizes that he what the Edmonton Oilers want him to be. And that is eventually... A bottom six forward. Mmm. That sounds weird. It does sound weird. I understand it. But Tyler Tulio, as mentioned, he's not the biggest guy, but he can bring a four check similar to Kyler Yamamoto. He can go into those uh, uh, deep areas, those, those corners, and really pry out a puck, make issues with guys who are bigger than him. And that is what the Edmonton Oilers are kind of missing in the bottom six. And he can score. And he can score. He can be physical. He can hit. But a lot of people say he has a great motor. And he really pays attention to detail in the defensive zone. A forward who pays attention to detail in the defensive zone. That is big. That is big for the development of a player. That is when you realize a player is in tune with the game. I know that sounds very mundane and you're basically sitting there going, yeah, they should be. That's, that's kind of the point of playing in the NHL or playing hockey. No. Not everybody, as I said yesterday, is Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl. Sometimes you have the Matthias Janmarks who go out there and just play the game right. Go and do the small things right. And that is what you need from a bottom guy like Tyler Tulio. And that is what he does. He can also shoot the puck. He is a very nasty shooter when it comes to the power play or any time that he gets a shooting lane. However, he's not going to force a shot every single time. If the shooting lane isn't there, he's not going to force it and potentially force a turnover the other way. He's going to manipulate uh, defenders. He's going to manipulate shooting lanes. And if he can get a shooting lane, great. If not, he's going to lay it off to a guy who is open on his team he is good at that he is good at getting pucks in deep which is a very solid thing to do but he's also good at getting that puck deep and getting it back into his team's possession for a four check for a cycle that's exciting. And then, and on top of it, he can clearly finish that cycle as well with those 42 goals that... La, 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 la. <laughs> Excuse me. With those 42 goals last year. And then, in the season before, first, or his uh, second full season in the QMJ, or in the OHL, excuse me, 27 goals. So, he does have that scoring touch. He has the ability to do it all. Tyler Tulio may be 5'10", but is a name for sure to watch out for in the Edmonton Oilers organization. Alrighty, we shall call it there today. We have went through number 10, number 9, and number 8, the top, er, top prospects in the Edmonton Oilers organization. What do you think? Is there a guy who snubbed? Do you think somebody should be higher? Do you think somebody should be lower? Let me know. Plus, we are going to be continuing on with this series over the next week as well. Guys, I love prospects, and you. this is the place to be to find out about the 
getting to know their top prospects. I'm telling you. Alrighty, we shall call it there. It is a Friday, everybody. So you know what that means. It's Friday then. It's Saturday, Sunday. What? Yes, it's Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. I hope you stay safe. Don't do anything I wouldn't do.